Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 77. It's the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after getting off elliptical at the YMCA. And my dog has for some reason just started walking in. You're going to hear him click clacking his nails. I'm not going to talk about my dog though, and nor am I going to be talking about Drake. I was really tempted to be talking about Drake today. Last album I reviewed was a rap album, and I thought, well, maybe, you know, that one did well, so maybe if I review another rap album, I'll get more viewers. But I have a policy on this show. I don't review things that I don't think I'm going to like. And I listened to, like, four tracks, and it just sounded really whack. Just not good. Now, I like Drake, but I don't always like Drake. And this just sounded not what I want. So that's not what the show's about. It's not about, like, getting on here and having me snarkily talk about things that suck about Drake. Although I could, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to be covering the band Methyl Ethel. I don't know if they're related or if they ever play at the Regal Beagle, but I hope that they do. Uh, and their album, Triage. Now, what confused me was when I looked at this band and then I read their bio, and I sort of looked at the uh, artists they're most compared to, they're from Australia, and they're compared a lot to Tame Impala as like a psychedelic rock outfit. I don't know what that means. This album I listened to is not psychedelic at all. It's actually a lot more, I don't know, I was thinking about it while I was listening to this album. I kind of went on a reverie, and uh, which means daydream in French and English. Um, and I started to think about like, what's up? <laughs> like, like what's up with all this 80s music that is like the sound of the 80s is so popular right now. You know, drum machines, dreamy synths, ethereal vocals. Um, this album very much has that. And by the time I was halfway through the first track, I already knew what my three word synopsis of the album was going to be. And that's pretty rare. Usually I wait till the end of the video and then I'm like, I don't know. So this is my three word review. It's good, bad 80s music. By that I mean, it's like using a lot of the tropes of bad 80s music but making it good. And I'm trying to like figure this out. Like, why is this? Why is it good? I mean, like, is it just that it's being made now? Does that show a certain level of intentionality that the, like the use of a drum machine, which sort of seemed like de facto and lazy in the eighties is now a little bit interesting. I mean, this album has got lots of, of great in interactions between electronic instruments and acoustic instruments. Um, it's weird because like you often see like, I don't know, Adult Swim or cartoons or absurd comedy, like making fun of the 80s and the 80s aesthetic and the video's aesthetic, and it's done ironically. There's nothing about this that's ironic. Like this is actual music being made by artists. Apparently it's mostly one guy, uh, Jack Webb? No, that's the guy from Dragnet. Jake Webb? I don't know. He had some innocuous name. Um, but, you know, so it's apparently him and his band with a female singer, and, and like, this doesn't feel ironic, but it sounds so 80s, you know? But yet it's really good, it's very listenable, it's not annoying, it doesn't sound like it's trying to be cute, it's just good music. I'll play you a little bit of an example. This is a song called Trip the Mains, which I think is exemplary of most of this album. My two favorite songs I'll discuss are not actually that much like this. But here is a sam sample of what I call this good, bad 80s music. Trip the Mains by Methyl Ethel. hear how intentionally 80s and it's like an 80s hook with the drum machine, the loud clear synthesizer, now comes the nice clear female vocals. Even the lyrics, the kind of cheesy 80s cliche thematics. But I don't know, I, I like it, I mean it's catchy and it's effective. You know, these kind of like super blasted keyboards, the clear vocals, the bass as, you know, being played by the keyboard. It's actually quite nice. You'll notice that that section was more than 15 seconds long. And I, I got a little bit, I'm like, oh no, then it'll be monetized. 
But then I'm like, wait a minute, the, the artist will just get the money. So I'm, I'm good with that. So Methyl Ethyl, if you make 10 cents off of this review over the next 10 years, thank you for making music and being an artist and you know, having uh, idiots like me talk about whatever you're doing. Um, so in that song, you know, you hear that like very willful 80s sound, but again, it doesn't throw me off. It doesn't feel annoying. Um, it kind of reminds me sort of like an ungoth Susie and the Banshees. I mean, like she has that like very piercing, strong quality to her voice. And you know, Susie and the Banshees is a very 80s band, but there's no darkness. There's no like forced atmosphere, forced ambiance. It sounds like it would be at, you know, at home in a mall or in a club or at a, you know, a coffee house. Um, the lyrics in general, I don't know if they're good. They don't seem to be that important. I mean, the band is like, their name is Methyl Ethyl, which is like a pun. Apparently triage is a pun because it's the third album of a trilogy. Um, they have an, another song that's kind of like a, a pun that I'll get to later, hip horror. Like, it feels like they like wordplay and that they like the sounds of words, but it's not, it doesn't seem that words matter. It seems that what matters is the voice. The voice is like another instrument and it's quite good. Now, not all of their stuff is in this kind of faux 80s mode. And you can listen to the whole thing without even necessarily having to be in that mindset. Uh, just track like Lost Blues, a lot more modern, got kind of a slow arpeggiated, not really arpeggiated, but automated uh, uh, keyboard sound. It actually starts to make me realize there's a lot of Radiohead in this band as well, even though they're very clear and upbeat. Uh, some of the textures that, that come in, uh, some of the chord progressions, it sounds kind of Radiohead-ish. So that's my general review for the album. The majority of the album is this nice, very well produced, I mean, um, like at times, like there'll be just great bass lines, like it, it feels almost like, um, uh, almost like air uses bass at times, like very strong, well-played bass. Um, there's a song, let me see which one is it. I have to look on my crazy long note list, not very long. Um, oh, the song Scream Hole, like the bass matches perfectly with the vocals, very nice. Really nice, lots of uh, small details in this. But there's two tracks that get sky stamped, just absolutely awesome songs that I think rise above the rest of the album. The first is Hip Horror, and I'll play it for you, but it's got this kind of like pulsing sequencer, uh, this drum machine that mixes with real drums, keyboards that mixes with real piano, a nice quiet part, this great strong voice that goes through. Uh, she even has like a vocal, vocal solo at the end. Really nice rhythms. It actually, it's maybe a bit of a stretch, but it kind of makes me feel, it doesn't sound like, but it makes me feel a little bit like the song Sound and Vision by Bowie, where like, it's like a dance song that's not really a dance song because it's a little bit too complicated, but yet it kind of makes you dance. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Let me know if you hear that in the, in the comments here. Here's Hip Horror by Methyl Ethel. I guess we'll keep, oh, it's my new thing. It's, I have random toys in the house, and so they'll dance while we're listening. So you have something to look at that's not just me going like this. So it's kind of it's like boring intro. You can't quite hear the bass that well, but it's really strong bass, that nice uh, drums with a nice hi-hat on the syncopated beat, not where you'd expect it to be. That's just great. Just I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I'd like to, because it's really hard to turn off. But it's an excellent song. And that's actually matched by the last song, No Fighting, which is very similar. Um, that's a little bit even more Radiohead heady in its production. Um, I kind of skip ahead. Just again, kind of nice driving. This is hardly 80s at all. It actually, you know, just sounds like a nice, really written pop song, kind of an indie pop song. Okay, I'm playing too much music now. Okay, so there it is. There's my review of Methyl Ethel. Methyl Ethel. Um, I liked it. I found it interesting. I found it engaging. Um, the worst it ever got was that it just got a little bit samey with the 80s sound, but it was well enough done that I actually never got tired of listening to it. And those two tracks, uh, Hip Horror and No Fighting, just jumped out of the album as really great.
My last note, which I, I'll say now is I learned how to put those things up there that make you click on other videos. Um, every once in a while I notice things. Uh, there's a bank of six televisions while I exercise. And these are two things that caught my attention while I was listening and writing notes. One was a story on Dr. Oz from a young woman, probably in her 30s. And the Chiron read, I can't stop taking stool softeners and laxatives. Now I sort of started laughing. But I'm like, that actually must be really tough. And I ended up having too much compassion. I felt really, I wanted to laugh, but that must be really tough being addicted to stool softeners. Um, and then the next one was an ad for My Pillow, which is a pillow company made by a fascist and uh, with a mustache. Do all fascists have mustaches or all people with mustaches fascists? That's a whole nother question. Answer in the comments. And, uh, and, and it said, foam pillows raise head too high but they misspelled two, it was T-O. It's like, is there, is there no quality control? Okay, uh, until the next time, I will say, there's the camera. Good bad 80s music.